going to kick off and and just uh, say if you want to introduce yourself, Becca, and who you are. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Well, I'm the notorious Bitcoin Becca. <laughs> I uh, gained a reputation on uh, Twitter, um, Bitcoin Twitter, for my tweets at uh directed at sailor mostly um you know i turned into his biggest sim so um yeah that's where people know me from and just like making memes because you know we're down with the system and uh you know making memes is a great way to sort of do that and i just i didn't know that i like me being a mid-30s woman can make memes as well. Like I always thought that was something for six year old boys <laughs> and like, you know, <laughs> incels in their basements. Like I didn't think I could do that. <laughs> and so I just started and yeah, uh, just kind of, I don't know, gained more attention that way. <laughs> Yeah, it was funny because yeah. when I met you, you were introduced to me as like Becca. And I immediately was like, hang on a minute, this can't be her. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, are you think go back and you're like, yes. And I was just like, oh, this is so nuts. I follow you on Instagram. That's so weird. Um yeah. yeah, I have to say your memes are quite racy. So for anyone who wants to see them, I'll put the I'll put the links in the show notes. Yeah, they're sometimes I'm like, yeah, not, I'm not going to retweet that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're definitely not safe for work, not safe for at home, not safe for around your wife or girlfriend, usually kids, probably not. So <laughs> yeah, oh, <that's> hilarious. <laughs> it's like, I think it's just like, it's unexpected to come from like a woman, like some, you know, like kind of racy or raunchy um tweets and memes so yeah I like I like the role that I play in the space it, it's fun <laughs> I feel like I get a pass especially when I was doing um the BT weekly um I would just like make fun of so many people in the space and like I get blocked yes but like I just kind of like some of the guys in the um chats were like you just get a pass from everyone like you can <laughs> make fun of like all the sponsors and whatever and they're just like oh okay <laughs> like I guess so <laughs> I guess there is some female privilege there <laughs> but then that's why like I just like make sandwiches now <laughs> yeah but, you can have to talk yeah. about that as well about about what that means but um can you give me a bit of backstory about how you got into bitcoin then because like you, you you sort of inhabit the normie world but you yeah. also have this huge presence in the bitcoin space like how long have you been into bitcoin and what was your your kind of in so um my in to bitcoin would have been um through the kaiser report so max and stacy i used or like when they had the kaiser report on rt news like i was a serial watcher of that like i watched all of it like every you know it was a few episodes they released every week and just like throughout the years like i started watching them like in 2011 like around that time so like like it was mentioned a few times but it never really like clicked or I didn't start like um noticing the bitcoin and like crypto talk in it was like starting in 2017 like when the big ICO boom and you know all the shit coins like the last um cycle that we went through that's when I started to look at bitcoin and like shit coins whatever, you know, all the other like tokens just trying to learn yeah. like, oh, what is this new technology? Because I trusted um, Max and Stacy, like they're reporting. I liked how they reported the news. It was different than like the mainstream. And I have always been, um, uh, I've always questioned, you know, oh, what's like, I'm in right here in Canada, like we have the CBC Global CTV, like there's only a few um, sources of news. And I've always been interested to see like what other people or other um, news agencies in other parts of the world are saying about certain things. Because can you like, can you just give some context on on Max and Stacy? So just for people who don't know, like was the show that they were doing on RT, was it uh, Bitcoin specific to begin with, or was it just a general show? So you were watching it anyway. And can you yeah. talk a bit a bit about who they are, just for context? Um, yeah, for sure. So, like for me, um, 
I got to know Max and Stacy just through YouTube and their YouTube channel, like, and their show, their news and financial show, The Kaiser Report. And that was on RT News. So that's like how, for me, like, that's how I view Max and Stacy as journalists, financial mm -hmm. journalists. And they were reporting, like, Max, um, became very well known during the 2008 financial crash. Um, he's like been on the BBC, like there's a bit, like they, they've made documentaries and all this. So I was always just like going to them for new financial and stuff that was going on in the world. And they've always been predicting, you know, the collapse of the U S financial system and the U S dollar and that this is a Ponzi scheme. And I've always been drawn to that. Cause like, I don't like, I just think about it logically. Like you can't just like print all this money and think everything's going to be okay. So I like to hear other people, I guess, um, the confirmation bias, right? Like, you know, agree with like what I was thinking or how I was perceiving the world and the like 2008 financial crash. So like a little bit more context to that, like I was going, um, I was in college like in 2009. So what, like one year after the 08 financial crash and I was right. doing business administration. So I had an interest in that and you no, know, just like being a good student and staying up on current news, right? Like you're a always kind of like, oh, what's going on? Like, is the US economy still tanking? Like, oh, there's this guy here on YouTube that's saying like, oh, the US dollar is going to implode in five years, you know, oh, and that would be, you know, in 2015. And buy gold, buy this, like you need um, hard, you know, you need to have uh, hard assets and just like going down that rabbit hole and with them as well, because they were also, because Bitcoin then, you know, was birthed out of the 2008 financial oh, interesting. crisis, so, right? So were Max and Stacey into Bitcoin at that point? Or did, did you kind of follow them on a journey getting into Bitcoin? Like, what was that? Well, that they of... got into it, like, way before, like, right, you know, around, I think, 2010 or 11. Like, there's, you know, you can watch any, or, you know, podcast with Max and Stacey. Like, they do talk about their origin stories um, quite a bit, like, throughout the different podcasts that they've appeared on and their own. Um, cause now they have like, they don't do that new show anymore. Like now they have their, um, the Max and Stacy report, which is very, it's like the same as the Kaiser report, but it's now, you know, their own thing. So, um, but they like their news show Kaiser report. Was it, like I said, it wasn't just only Bitcoin focused because it wasn't like mm. Bitcoin was just brand new. They were right. covering all the financial markets. So throughout the years, they always um, report on Bitcoin and the developments of what was going on. And not just Bitcoin, like Ethereum 2 and Ripple. Like I remember they interviewed Vitalik, like if they were in Toronto and like they interviewed him like in this park somewhere. It's like, and then they've had the, they had the XRP guy on like, they, cause they were learning too, right? Everyone, mm. like all of a sudden, like blockchain, like everything was blockchain ICO in 2017, right? That was the, you know, yeah. this last cycle we saw NFTs were the big thing. So it was like in that hype and, they then also learned, you know, oh, it's like Bitcoin only. And then they went full, like full steam that way. Right. And me just being like <laughs> a follower of theirs, I was like, oh, yeah, like they're total, you know, they're right. I'm also going to, you know, I'm going to keep on following these guys because, you know, they, what they're saying makes sense to me and how I view, you know, how I perceive the world. Yeah. And just so, for context as well, for anyone watching this, so Max and Stacey are now based out of El Salvador. So they were very early movers to El Salvador, which has obviously now made Bitcoin legal tender as the first country in the world to do that. And I believe that they're advisors to Nabil Kele, right? So they're kind of helping him set up the whole Bitcoin infrastructure in, in El Salvador. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And they have a... um like an investment um company i can't i don't know what the name Elzo, is elzonte oh, capital yes capital there yeah. we go <laughs> yes yes elzonte capital i should know that but yeah so they run that you know they're um shining the bitcoin light on el salvador and reporting from there and i think that's fantastic like i love to hear like they're 
Um, to me, I view them like they're talking, like they're walking the walk. Like they're yeah. not just, you know, LARPing, say online, like, oh, El Salvador this, like, oh, it'll be great. And sitting, you know, somewhere in Carolina or in France, like wherever, like they're, they're, they, they're, yeah, yeah. They're doing it. So it's great to see that and like to get the updates from Stacy, like when they first sort of went there saying like, oh, she felt safe, like walking around the city. The crime had dropped so much, right? Like with yeah. all the reforms that, that he brought in and um, just highlighting that like all the residents and the communities are so grateful that they can like now they have the opportunity to build, you know, build a yeah. life and not... Um, you know, always have that fear of, you know, all the crime and every, you know, everything that was corruption and whatnot that was going on there. So, yeah, the stimulus for the economy has been great. And so when you got into like Bitcoin initially, then like, what was your journey? You kind of got interested in it watching like Max and Stacey. And then yeah, what did you sure. do? Did you sort of start going, right, I'm going to buy it? Did you go, I'm going to try and mine? Like, what was your, what was your journey? <laughs> so, <laughs> was um, it just straight to right? memeing? <laughs> no, it, def it definitely wasn't um, straight to memeing. Um, it was sort of um, like, what's Bitcoin? What's E? What's, um, uh, you know, XRP, XLM, like all these tokens. So we did like what a lot of people um, did in 2017 was we, you started going to the Bitcoin meetups or like crypto meetups. And there was one here in Calgary, like that we went to like kind of on a regular basis for a few months. Cause um, my partner and I, we were like trying to understand like, what is this stuff? Like it, you know, what, mm -hmm. what's the technology, what does Bitcoin or um, like blockchain mean? Like what do all these words like mean? So we were just like on the yeah. path of learning, like trying to learn what it was. And, but then unfortunately, like these um, Bitcoin meetups we were going to, like it was a total like a shitcoin meetup. Like it was just, oh, here are the top 10 um, gainers this week. Like, oh, you know, whatever, you know, jumped 700% or, you know, 200% because those were... The, that that was that time back then right and it's like oh you should throw a hundred dollars at this like throw fifty dollars here like it was all just um chasing gains and that was and yeah. the trading stuff and that I wasn't that wasn't what I wanted like I I was like oh this isn't really that great like we saw going there was a whole like there was a whole like drama that ended up with this um bitcoin meetup like the guy there was this, this like real like shit coiner guy that started coming selling like his token like this guy ended up going bankrupt like one of the biggest bankruptcies um in Alberta history like the, it's oh, like wow. ins and they were like recruiting people to invest and like help like you know um with the back end of their coin and stuff like that and like people in you know, the province or in the area here, like they got scammed from him. So like it totally turned into like we saw firsthand like the scam side of like these tokens. And wow. we were like kind of put back from it. And we were like, okay, like, you know, we'll just get by, you know, the top whatever five so bitcoin eth you know a few of the other st other um tokens and that was like 20 so in 20 like 18 and then mm. through that time period um like you know i was just oh it's cool like to you know sit save in this you know always buy a little bit like I was DCAing before I even knew what DCA was I was like oh this is like I'm just you have to you have to explain my paycheck I was gonna yeah, say you okay. have to explain the acronym what dollar cost averaging <laughs> yeah so DCA yeah it's dollar cost averaging so it's just essentially like a savings like that's how I've always like once I learned a little bit more about it that's how I started viewing Bitcoin was like it's a savings account like it's my Swiss bank that uh, it's like mine like it's my swiss bank it's in the swiss mountains it has a huge vault like no one like that's what this technology is or like the research that i was like doing like that's what you know i was like oh it's a savings like this is the new money i was like okay cool like i'm just going to start buying some of this 
And um, then like when the pandemic, like when 2020 came around and just like how everything like pivoted towards like um, totalitarianism and mm-hmm. like complete tyranny, like especially in the West here, like I was like, oh, hey, Vax and Stacy have been saying since like I've been watching them, you know, for almost 10 years, like, oh, the financial collapse, like, oh, is this it? Like, is this the trigger for it? And then I started going even deeper down the Bitcoin rabbit hole. And then that's when um, like Robert Breedlove, he has um, his podcast, um, the What is Money show and his first um like guest or um, session that he did was with Michael Saylor. And that's like, I like, that's, I just went like a hundred miles. And so an obsession was born. Complete obsession. I was like, who is this guy? Like he just came out of nowhere. I was like, I love every, like everything that he was saying. I was just like, I was like more like I just need more of it and it's like I loved how he talked about the Romans and the engineering and everything that he said like it just made sense and I just got completely like sailor like brainwashed by him like and then as the whole um pandemic and fine and the money printing as it just kept on going and it just didn't like clown world just intensified And I was like, okay, you know, I I jumped into Bitcoin Twitter, I guess, essentially, like into Twitter. I was like, I want to be more active. Like I started following and just, yeah, kind of. It's funny, actually, you mentioned about Robert Breedlove. I I was going to say with Robert, no, because Robert Breedlove was kind of my orange pill. So I got sent a video as Jordan Peterson interviewing Robert Breedlove, Gigi, um, Mm. John Vallis and Richard James, the filmmaker. And yes. then right after that, I mean, that was just like 90 minutes of, oh, my God. And I'd been in financial markets for 20 years. And I was like, I understand nothing about finance. Oh, my God. And then I started listening to Robert Breedlove's podcast. And the first like section I listened to, it wasn't Sailor, it was the Jeff Booth series. So then uh, I read yes. The Price of Tomorrow. And then it all just kind of like, sp- sp- and that was only 18 months ago. It was crazy. And then it's just like you go, oh, wow. So many things that made no sense to me now suddenly make sense. And it's like all the pieces fall into place and then you just become completely obsessed by it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like, oh my God, like how long, how long has this actually been going on? And then you start like looking into the history, and like, oh my. Like, why yeah. had the society like just split like in the seven, like 1971? Like that like year date that decade like just comes up so much like when you look at so many aspects of clown world like almost in any industry or any part of society like where you like in the west here like it all like comes back to you know 1971 and then you go back even further to like uh what 1913 like when the fed was created yeah yeah you keep going back in history and you're just like whoa like it's crazy that now we live in a time where with the internet and with communication <clears throat> and where there's a real chance that um like de- decentralization all over the world can um like work but yeah. it's going to be like it it is a war like actually against like this is you know centralized forces against decentralization yeah like there's and there's been a few like podcasts that I've listened to with um um Alex Svetsky and some of uh, like laser hoddle like back in in 2021 or so they're like and who else was on there um the guy that does the uh <laughs> I picture the meme I made of him, but I can't think of his name right now. It's um untapped growth. They all had um like this podcast and they were kind of laser hot just talking about like how um like with the fourth turning and stuff like that, it always swings from like centralization over to decentralization and back. Like it's this pendulum that like yeah. humanity always kind of goes through. And that like now we're at this point um, with technology and like humanity that maybe like decentralization, if it wins, like it'll be set 
that and it'll lay that foundation for that like layer one type of um yeah, I mean, I guess I guess the whole world can be connected while being decentralized in a way that wasn't possible before. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I yes. think you're right. Yeah. I think people yeah. don't appreciate actually how monumental Bitcoin is in terms of the protocol and the network just because and I say this to people, they look like I'm crazy. And I'm like, everything is going to be built on this blockchain at some point in the way that the Internet is just pervasive now. It's going to be pervasive in the same way. And you just don't realize it right now. Yeah, yeah, because like um, it's history like uh, since i've been alive like technology just keeps increasing right it's always compounding yeah. and it keeps getting better and better but up until you know the turn of the century like life was always the same for so long for so many generations and now it's like all compounded where we see like generational like technological changes in just a few years now yeah. it is, right like it's just so quick that um people don't appreciate like the time like the low time preference like what safe Adine like talks about in the bitcoin standard right like that high time preference yeah. versus low time preference and it's just like everything just seems so fast in like normie world right like with all of us our day-to-day -day lives and you know it's just Oh, we just need, you know, it's a lot of high time preference, Um, like just in our own lives, we might not know it or just like from, you know, the outside forces, like, you know, job, yeah. mark, the marketing, like the all the propaganda that's everywhere, like it kind of tries to it's suck frenetic. you in. Yes, yeah, it tries to suck you into that high time preference um, sort of thinking. And a lot of people don't, I like, I feel like don't appreciate that long, that low time preference, like taking a step back and just thinking like more what long term. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So how did you get into memeing then? Like, do you have an artistic background or a comedy background or did you just suddenly fall into it and go, hey, I'm quite good at this? Um, I've always... Like, so I'm my own best friend. <laughs> like, I've always, like, found my Aww. sense of humor, like, <laughs> so different from other people. Like, it's just like... Are you, try, are you trying to tell me that you laugh at your own jokes? <laughs> all the time. Like, I'm not even, like, kidding. And, like, I think it's, like, silly things. Like, so when I was um in college and studying, like, for exams or anything like that, like, I would come up with, like, acronyms and, like, silly stories. Or, like, there's... I remember, like, a few times, like, Mariah Carey songs, like, certain, like like equations or something like so I'd write that stuff like in there and that's like a form of meaning too and I didn't even know so I've always like because I've been acting on this a little bit I'm like oh actually I feel like I've always been like a, you know a little bit and then like um I was he like I was a huge like Pinterest like junkie so on there you know like all the e cards like back in the you know the two 2010s like yeah. During that time, like, you know, oh, another bottle of tequila down. Like, <laughs> so I always like love stuff like that. Like by the friends or the people I was hanging out with at that time in my life, like we all had a really twisted sense of humor. So I've always like enjoyed memes. And then, yeah, it wasn't until I got on to Twitter, like really more like seriously in like 2020. And, uh, you know, I started following, like I was in the replies, like that, that's just like how I actually started like on Twitter. I was like, oh, I'm just going to be in the replies and like steal memes because memes are false. So I would just like steal them and put, repost them and like just make an outlandish comment, you know, and I do, you know, like on a American huddle, like people that have more followers so that people would see the comment be like, who's this broad? Like, what's this? You know, and so I, and that's kind of how I got into it. And I just downloaded like some of the basic like meme generator apps and yeah, just kind of started, yeah, editing, <laughs> editing from there. Like they're so basic. I'm not, I'm like low tier memer like there's so many better memers out there like yellow like he makes meme videos like I'm nowhere near that so but then 
Yeah, I guess I just got noticed then eventually because I'm always just kind of. Yeah. You're stalking Michael Sayla. <laughs> yeah, well, that. <laughs> For sure. I was doing, but not anymore because, you know, I'm taking this. But, um, yeah, it was, it was funny started... actually because um, I, I think the the meme that really stuck in my mind about you that like made your name register in my head was that one where there was that huge big black guy who's like a bouncer and then the girl sort of rubbing up rubbing up behind him and it said oh, something yeah. like Becca every time Michael Saylor tweets or something like that and I was like oh my god somebody's made a meme of her to make fun of her because she's doing this all the time and then I realized it was your own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's definitely me like it's that like self-deprecation it's like the best like you just gotta like, go with it like uh. <laughs> like I, I've made the beans so I have to I have to relish in the beans no, it's funny because it's yeah, like it's yeah. this persona and it's just so um I mean it, it's it's very very um uh, recognizable like it really sticks in your mind like when I saw those I was just like oh my god and when I met you I was like oh my god that is that thing Quinn Becca surely not <laughs> She's like it's like an internet celebrity. <laughs> I know, it's so it's silly. <laughs> That's the word I'll use. No, it's hilarious. It's yes. awesome. Can you talk to me a bit about the meme factory then? Like what the meme factory is and how you got involved with that whole crowd and like what it is that you guys are doing. Yeah, so it doesn't exist. Um <laughs> sorry, I forgot to say that, isn't it? The first I think I put yeah. a note about it. While I know it does not exist, if it did, what would the meme factory be and how would you hypothetically have become involved? That was my yes. actual question that I'd written yes. down. <laughs> um yeah, so if the meme factory did exist, it would be very similar to like a software sales company so where you have your sales team and they're like uh, the sales team and memers like there's analogies there because they're out we're out there selling bitcoin right we're trying to highlight we're the guerrilla marketing team there's all different ways that you can market bitcoin it's not just you know um corporate and enterprise, you know, black suit and tie. Um, Sailor said once, um, it's Satoshi's in the boardroom and Sats maybe in the bedroom. Um, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I want those lines. Like there's different um, levels of marketing. There's different um, types of propaganda that you can create that will draw um people in from all walks of life, all different types of careers, and Bitcoin is for everyone. So um, the meme factory would be like, um, you know, the penny stock salesmen from like the 80s, like that were scamming all the penny the stocks. The Wolf of Wall so Street guy. Like, what, yeah, what was his name again? Yes, exactly. Jordan something, is it? Jordan, uh, Jordan Belfort, yes. That's it. <laughs> so we're kind of like on that level, like raunchy, like sometimes there's a few hits in there um, and a few like Think Boy um, tweets from some of the meme factory meme factory members but um yeah like i view it as just a marketing team for bitcoin and we produce <laughs> propaganda all different types of propaganda and we just want to highlight not just bitcoin but clown world the political system the financial system the state like everyone's laughing at us all the time but we're gonna win so sometimes we just laugh back and say have fun staying poor sometimes we make memes that um try and highlight or speak a little bit of truth like recently i don't know if you saw the tiktok of the edmonton i think he was a city councillor or something andrew i think his name was about the 15 minute city Right. So I see that. And my thought is, um, well, this is what the G7 wants. Like this is the WEF like reset. You know, it's a I hear it as like that's an open air prison. Like so <laughs> my meme, I'm like, OK, I'm going to meme this guy. Like he doesn't speak on behalf of Canadians. Like he speaks on behalf of WEF and Klaus Schwab. Like he has other interests. Like it's not. Oh, so you can walk 15 
minutes and have everything that you need there. So you're telling me there's going to be a furniture store there, a grocery store, a pharmacy, like um, a shoe store. Like where is the dollar store there? Or are we highlighting locally like crafted products? Where are those products going to be manufactured? Like, are we still importing everything from China and Asia? Like, no one asks these questions because, like, no, it's like, it's not because of that. It's for control. So, like. Well, that's, that's I think, the thing that you're, the key point you're hitting on with clown world is it's like there's a policy and it has no rational basis in fact. And then it's just like it spawns all of this bureaucracy and all of this funding and all of this kind of these organizations and these committees. And actually none of it, nobody asked for it. It doesn't work. It's poorly thought out. It makes no sense. And it's almost like it's supposed to make no sense. You know, you kind of look at it and you're like, make it make sense. I mean, the thing with the 15 minute cities, they're doing this in the UK as well. And it's just it's so ridiculous. They put bollards up around towns <laughs> so you can't drive outside of your 15 minute neighborhood, which means that some people, when they drop their kids to school, instead of it taking 20 minutes, it takes an hour and a half because they either have to go a different route or they have to go to a different school now that's actually further away. So they're in their car like more. Um but it's just completely ridiculous. And I just sort of think, you know, Walmart didn't build its stores outside of town because they wanted people to drive. They did it because, you know, there were high rates for businesses in town centers. So businesses couldn't afford to have shops there. You know, it's much cheaper to put a Walmart on a piece of land outside of town. So all these policies that have kind of preceded it have basically led to things being more spread out and you needing a car maybe to go there and then they come in and say oh we're going to make 15 minute cities and now you can't move outside of an area and I'm like but this is how you guys the same same people usually engineered it <laughs> and now you want to put in a piece of bureaucracy to say well actually yeah we've created incentives for you to get in your car but we're now going to tell you that you're not allowed to do that I'm just... <laughs> clown yeah, world exactly that's it, it no, it totally is. And it's like the like you pointed out, it's the bureaucracy on all the levels, like the municipal level level, like at the city levels, they approve the communities and the expansions. Like they approve all that because they need to go build all the 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 heartbeat of the suburbia, like the sewage system, the electrical grid, the internet, all the infrastructure. They have to build that out. So they've been for the last, I'm sure, since 1971, if you actually go back and look at, like, you know, how city planning has has happened or has developed over the past 30 or, you know, four or five decades in North America, like it was exactly like you pointed out, design, you know, that sprawl, you know, um, yeah. urban design, that urban sprawl. And now all of a sudden... Oh, uh, the narrative has changed and everything that we've done, like, that's actually wrong. So, like, let's redesign this way now until, what, like, in 20 years, we're, like, actually, like, this isn't the right way either. Let's design this way. And this is this low time or this high time preference. Um, yeah. You know, it's not just thinking. It's the way that, at least here in Canada and in the States too, like, you know, it's every four years, like it, down there, it's like a new, you know, possibly a new government. And then, you know, they come in and they change all this stuff. Yeah. Like, oh, we're going to do this program and this. And it's like all this, just like such a waste. Like, it's such a waste of man hours. It's like time. It's people's time. Like, they're the people that work in all these, like, bureaucratic positions that you know the CRA um health you know all of this bloated government yeah that it just keeps getting bigger right that's the whole purpose of the state uh, now it's it, like it just keeps growing like it just needs to keep yeah growing. and it and it doesn't generate value and, and yeah zero value it only steals and it's just like yeah so I you totally meme clown world <laughs> yeah you just want to meme it right like what like you have to point out how ridiculous it is because maybe someone from it in there maybe someone will look at it and maybe ask a deeper question like oh what what are what you know what's the point of this policy now or you know you know the financial markets like oh now they're printing another 
you know, billions of dollars for this guy over here, this program here? Like, what about, like, in the UK, right? Like, aren't all the healthcare workers um, on strike now? Like, they all yeah. want a pay raise. And, like, I made a comment. I was like, obviously, they want a pay raise because the last two, three years, they've seen the government just hand over billions of dollars to a few companies. And these guys all benefited. It's like, well, where's our cut? Right. Yeah. And this is this this um contillionaire, this money, like the it everything just needs to keep on um oh I'm in the matrix. <laughs> ah. You're fully in the matrix. That's so weird. Oh my god. And it's yeah. only your side of the screen, like mine looks normal, but yours is just like some uh uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Okay, wait, I'm gonna quickly stop. <laughs> Okay. Oh, there we are. <laughs> I don't know. The webcam that I'm using is like kind of older. So, you know, kind of stuff. hilarious. Step. That was surreal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was going to ask you as well, because I mean, this is this is like a question, I guess, for normies. But, you know, why is it that um, that or can, can you sort of conceptualize or explain why memeing is so important in the Bitcoin space? Because I actually did uh, a Bitcoin course for three weeks. Um, they actually had a whole section where they taught us to meme. That was actually part of the course. Um, really? Yeah. So, yeah. And it's really funny because I see people whose job descriptions are sometimes like chief meme officer and it's not even a joke job description. Um, but it's a huge part of the Bitcoin space. So can you talk about that and like why that is? Well, because memes speak truth, like there's truth to there. there's you, like I feel there's a kernel to truth to most of the memes in the Bitcoin space. Like we're highlighting the hypocrisy. We're highlighting the the fraud, the the money printing, all all these things were highlighting them, but also with humor. But there's um, which comedian said like, if you're gonna tell the truth, like at least make them laugh. With George Carlin, like something. There's a quote right. along that line, right? And I feel like with Bitcoin because the time chain, like that's truth, like that's energy has been taken and it's been converted and bitcoin it was mine and those transactions like they're there forever like yeah and that like that's truth and bitcoin is truth and once like you kind of realize that it's like then you can yeah just make the propaganda like i feel like we're all soldiers like all of us i feel one way or another maybe some more extreme than others um want the separation of money and state and that's what bitcoin in my opinion and how i view it like that's what it's designed to do and that's its you know fundamental purpose is to separate those two just like how the um church and state was separated you know centuries ago like yeah. the same thing has to happen with the money because it just can't be that there's a group of people that can print money that like that you yeah. have to work for that yeah. they just keep making it and it's like what that's not okay and um nico and opti on simply bitcoin they say this all all the time right and i'm a, i love their show like shout out to them like i encourage anyone that's listening um go check them out they do a weekly um, or a daily show where they cover Bitcoin and they do a meme review on on there. So, you know, it's like they go through the news culture and then it's like they end with memes. So it's like a good way. And, you know, the memes are always changing, too. It's just like the new right means there's some static memes, like classic ones that will, you know, can always be appropriate in some situations. But then the memes are living, too. They're, you know, always changing. And other um, memers or people will just, you know, take the meme and build on top of it and change it up. And that's what makes it, like, so much fun. Like, some memes can just take on a life of its own. And you and you never know which meme is going to, that's going to happen to either. Like, that's one yeah. of the, like, it can be frustrating too. Like, sometimes you spend, like, hours on a meme, you know, and it does nothing. And then other times it's just, you quickly you just do like, one off the cuff. Something. Yeah. Really? So gets, do you, like, do you, so do you ways, spend like, quite a lot of time crafting your memes then? Is that something that you're quite careful about? <laughs> Yeah, 
there's been times. Okay, so like, um, I used to deliver tires, so that's how I got like my <laughs> ten thousand hours of um orange pilling in via podcast. Was like I was doing that. So I oh, so you were just listening to it in while you're driving. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I ha- I was driving like seven. It was seven hundred and twenty kilometers a day, like a day. So like I could, I would smash. Wait, smash sorry, but just just pause podcast. on that. Sorry, was that like yeah. in one of these large trucks? Um, so like a Mercedes Sprinter. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's so random. <laughs> I know it totally is. But that was like my, my Bitcoin University. So and so and like there would be times I'd be driving and like I'd be listening to a podcast and then a meme would pop into my head. And I would have to pull over. Like I just had to make it. It's like it can turn into an addiction. Like it it really can be. And like um the BT weekly covers that I was doing for a while, I'm transitioning from that. But uh, like they would take me hours. Like eight nine ten hours to do because actually I can you so talk much... about what bt is as well uh bt so it's for me it stands for bitcoin twitter and then i was doing like a fake like gossip magazine like bt weekly all last year um so and i would just come out with like new covers like they would be the same as you know the gossip magazines um, U.S. Weekly people, like, you know, it was like this flavor. And those took me like a really long time. I mean, obviously, <laughs> like people appreciated and that was great, you know, and everyone or not everyone, but some people are harassing me, you know, like we need more of this in 2023. <laughs> so it's but I'm just I don't know. I'm kind of over it with all Bitcoin Twitter right now. <laughs> <laughs> I kept getting some- Ended at the beginning of the year so I just kind of <laughs> lost my motivation I was, like, oh. I was gonna say actually yeah because I saw that because I think when I first met you you'd given me a different address to the your actual one that you were in Twitter jail with and then yes. the other one and I was kind of surprised because I thought under Elon Musk that Twitter had got a little bit more liberal in the true sense of the word um are you drinking beer or urine <laughs> oh no it's um vitamin I know this looks really gross actually no, they're vitamin C little tablets <laughs> that efforts. This? Yeah. Oh, eff- effervescent. Yeah, oh, sorry. Is that the name? That's the name of right, right, right. Got it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, those tablets, right? Like you can yeah. add them to water. Yeah. So um, quick side story. Um, we were just in uh, Munich, Germany, like a couple of weeks ago there. And I bought like 50 packs of those like to bring back to Canada with me because they're so much cheaper over there. They're oh, really? 50 cents. And they're like the they're like four or five dollars here for a pack of 10. And I'm like, oh, wow. I get 20 for 50 cents. <laughs> my um like my suitcase was full. I was like, oh my goodness. Like if they asked me about this, like what is this press powder actually? Like <laughs> come into this room, lady. What's this Bitcoin sticker on your laptop? Like what's this these characters? your phone what's all this bitcoin uh, my obsex is the worst like it's so bad like <laughs> I, so um like i swear so i was traveling with my bitcoin hat um when we came back from uh we came back from oh germany uh, this was in the summer and they pulled us over and i swear like i was sick with covid but i was scamming the government and uh, I had my Bitcoin hat and then they pulled me over for random testing and then pulled me into immigration too. And I'm pretty sure it was like, oh, I was targeted because of my Bitcoin hat. So when I came back this time, I um, took it off and put it in my carry on before I went through immigration. So I was like, oh, they can't like single me out. <laughs> and I didn't get pulled in. So, you know, correlations causation. I don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, Right. Okay. So where did we get to? We were talking about your Twitter jail. So how did you end up in Twitter jail? Um, Yeah. So this most recent um, stint was I commented on a, it's one of these troll accounts on, um, on Twitter. Um, 
they're they're always mocking um you know feminists the whole gender thing all the you know craziness of clown world so it was a troll post i can't even remember what it was about but something about feminists and, and women and then i commented on the reply like oh get back into the kitchen and make some sandwiches and then i got like all, an almost immediate seven day um suspension I was like, oh, okay. wait. So well, wait. So did I, Twitter? Did Twitter like? Do you think it was like an automated algorithm, algorithm, or a moderator that thought you were being a misogynist? I think that, it was a moderator. It was probably flagged like instantly. And then the second one, um, when we met at the meetup, was I commented on um, one of the top earning OnlyFans ladies. Um, that because she made this, she posted this um thirsty picture of her, and it said me or a PS or an Xbox or a PS5, I don't know, one of the gaming consoles. <laughs> and so I just wrote on the bottom because, like, I you know, sometimes I want to warn these um people, these incels and simps, like, you know, so I just said one thought equals one thought. And then I also got hit with immediate seven day suspension for that. And I was like, That's was that was crazy. that for the word thought? Was that what they took? I guess issue so, with? yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. interesting. And I also found out um two days ago I made a comment on um something in Canada it was a headline here in Canada about um the pandemic spending, right? Because now there's all these inquiries into this, how the liberals spend yeah. all this money. And um, so it was one of these, whatever articles, this inquiry that's going on. And I was like, oh, the but the bankers are laughing because like they loan the money to the government. They're making, you know, they're getting the interest yeah. payments. Like they're laughing. And someone commented that Twitter put a warning on that tweet. That it wasn't safe. I was like, oh, okay. Like, that's great. Isn't so. that interesting? Wow. Huh. Mm -hmm. I wonder yeah, if that's so... just still some of their, like, automated uh, moderation stuff. Because I see stuff that's a lot worse than that that doesn't get dinged. Mm -hmm. Or at least if it yeah, gets yeah. dinged, I mean, I guess I, I didn't notice that something got taken down. I do like that feature, though, they've, they've got now where, like, readers can add context. Because that's always hilarious. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> somebody puts something out there that's just like full of rubbish and then there's context underneath and it's so polite it's like readers have added some context you know subtext yeah. this is entirely bullshit and here's why <laughs> yeah, yeah so but I guess like are you making the move to Noster is everyone like I think yeah. that's the next big thing right so yeah so Access Tribe has an account on Noster and I spent probably I want to say about it was, I mean, I'm not technical, so I want to say it was a good mm -hmm. six to eight hours trying to understand how the heck to get myself onboarded. And I think this was actually on Christmas Eve. I was sat there just trying to figure out how to do it. I managed to get on and I managed to set up everything. It was actually Jeff Booth who had explained to somebody in one of his threads about how to get the profile picture up there and the backdrop and everything. And I did that. And then they've released a few updates and my profile picture and my like banner keeps disappearing. So I keep kind of going back and forth. I haven't actually worked out yet how to put gifts and everything on there and do all of that kind of stuff. So I haven't been like cross posting. Um, yeah. But every time I see somebody put their Nostra pub key on, on social, I follow it and I just send them back my own and I'm just like, yep, followed. Um so, yeah, I'm trying to kind of shift some activity there because I just love the concept of it. We should should yeah, we maybe yeah. explain what NOSTA is? You go for it. Explain the NOSTA protocol <laughs> and why it matters. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So this is a uh, technical learning time with Becca. <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk about NOSTA. So NOSTA is a uh, communications protocol, um, much like the internet and email. And, uh, yeah, that's about as far as I go. <laughs> <laughs> we should say yeah. it's fully decentralized. Um, and therefore, what it allows you to do in social media is to port your social media presence and your followers to any interface. 
So there is no centralized interface or company that can essentially shut you down, um, is, is I guess the point of it. Um, that's why I like it. Although there's a guy that I follow that I think is a lightning developer and he put a comment saying his concern about it was that if your pub key gets compromised, you've got no way of sort of retrieving your profile, which I, I, I get his point, but then that's the same issue as with Bitcoin. So I guess you're back to the same thing. You know, you either do self-custody and you do it well or, um, you know, that's what happens. So, yeah. Anyways, yeah, are you are you on Noster, by the way? Because I don't yeah. think I follow you. Are you? Okay. I'm, I'm on there, but I honestly, I haven't really. Um, oh, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. wait. No, no, no. Yeah. I do follow you because you posted it yeah. on there and I followed you and I went back and you, I said, here's, here's ours. And you replied and said, I'll do it later. I'm drunk now. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I was drinking. <laughs> I know. I have... So I have so much like bookmarked. I'm like, oh, I'll do this later. I'll do this later. So my intent is once I get my act together, um, like I'm just waiting for, I guess now there's a few um, apps for Android for Noster. Like I was just yes. waiting for something um, to come out that was user, that the UX like was good. So um, my intention is just to search Noster um, then on Twitter and just follow everyone that way. So I might be lagging behind, but I definitely think um, like, yeah, lots of people are transitioning over to it. Um, I think that there's like a, you know, a little bit of a learning um, yeah. curve because yeah. it's you're signing messages um, with a public key, right? It's a public yeah. private key concept, which um, like, if you relate it to Bitcoin, like a lot, like normies that I talk to, like they don't get that concept. Yeah. So I feel like because this, I think people think about it as like a login. With, yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, it's like a login, like Twitter, like that. You know what? You know, um, or yeah. for some app somewhere, it's like oh, if I lose my password, I can just like forget password and it'll send it to me. No, actually you know, hey, you need to be responsible for your yeah. keys, you know, and you're signing messages well, my, and if you keep. Right. So my yeah. issue was that I was using astral.ninja on the browser and I was using Damus on my phone and I got super confused about the fact that the public key was completely different on both of them. And so I reached out to, is it Derek Ross, who was actually super helpful, but clearly didn't realize I was as technically inept as he thought I was. <laughs> so, so I was going, like, the numbers, the string is different. <laughs> I was like, and he's like, no, it's the same number. And of course, I didn't realize that what he meant is the same series of zeros and ones in the background, but one was NPUB and one was hex. And he kept yes, using this yeah. terminology. And I was sat there and I was like, I don't fucking understand what you're saying. Look at the yeah. numbers. They are different. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and stuff like, like that, I think, is a normal thing they've heard, all right? Yeah, for sure. And I feel like, um, like a lot of people are super like, kind of like, oh, we have this, like, our championing it and that's great and you know I do hope it does you know um, take or that um that it can gain more users and more market share people realize yeah. like oh it's decentralized so that actually means like um like it kind of brings um responsibility back to you and like a reputation sort of um base right like yeah. um user like that's how because if you're like NPUB or your um, Noster key, like in theory, like how I'm understanding it is that that would be your like messaging, like your, your public signature. Address. Yeah, for all your messages or content for anything that you want to, you know, yeah. put out there. Well, essentially on, what on you're the... doing is your your MPUB is your public address and then your, yeah. your private key is what you sign your posts with, but you generally only have to log in with it once on a session mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. and then do it that way. Yeah, I, 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 it has made me laugh this thing on Twitter. It's like how people are announcing, that's it. I'm leaving Twitter. I'm going to Nostra now. Two days later, Again, I see them yeah. tweet and I'm like, oh, hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only, I... Just like when the the Gitter, like there was that phase, it lasted like also 24 hours. And then the, the yeah. Mastodon, like everyone moved over there for like two days. And then every everyone came back because, 
you know, there is something to say for n- network effect. And you yeah. know, there's the majority. Well, of and user experience. Are, I mean, Twitter's had yes, what nearly yeah. twenty years or whatever it is of building a UI. I mean, I know it yeah. has its flaws, but it has them. Um, yeah. I wanted to ask you a thing about memeing. Actually, just just to go back to that topic, can you give the backstory about laser eyes for people? Because this comes up all the time with people who come into the Bitcoin <laughs> space, and they'll say, "Why is it everybody's got laser eyes on their on their thing?" And there's a whole article about it in Bitcoin Magazine. But can you sort of talk about that meme and what that means, and why so many people have the laser eyes? <laughs> yeah. So the laser eyes came about in the spring of. 2021 so right before um the bitcoin conference right because it was canceled for 2020 and then it was um scheduled for uh 2021 and i think it was in june i believe or end of may and um so before that so it actually so what i've heard is um so the urban legend is that it was birthed out of the meme, the non-existent meme factory from um, the one and only chair force, that it was actually his idea. And somehow in their group chat, and this was prior to um, me joining the meme factory and making it great. Um, So this was just when it was the boys and the puppet and Labra. I'm probably missing some people or some um, (laughs) characters, but um, yeah, it came from there and they just said like, um, it was just uh, laser eyes till a hundred K because every, like there was a fraction of people on Bitcoin Twitter that were saying a hundred K that the Bitcoin price is going to hit them. So they said like, this is when the laser Like that's how that's what laser eyes means to me. It means you know it's like, and then wait. So is it is it now laser eyes till fiat dies? So now it's just the laser eyes are staying until until fiat. Well, that could be a way. Yeah, yeah, like it's probably going to be laser eyes till I die. (laughs) (laughs) I'm pretty sure I tweeted that once. Oh God, that's so funny. People have. (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, so it came it came about um during that time before the conference and then with Michael Saylor was doing, you know, his big spiel and stuff everywhere with the cyber hornets and then he changed his profile picture. This all happened in the span of like a few days. Like um but and then yeah, everyone just the, had the laser eyes. Everyone just kind of had the laser eyes. And then there's some hard for plebs out there, anons, like they supposedly have lists of the people that have taken their laser eyes off and then put them back on or what their status is. So yeah, what they're going to do with that information, I I don't know. But um, yeah, we'll we'll see once we have like Citadel Wars or something like that. (laughs) The Maxis will go after them. Um, So Mm -hmm. I want to say congratulations, by the way, on your recent engagement. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, so that was that was. Uh, I like the I like the tweet. What was it? Warning, trigger warning, engagement tweet <laughs> tweet coming yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, it's Very happening. Good. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Um, and I also laughed my ass off when I saw that Michael Saylor put a little broken heart on there. <laughs> I know. I I I died. It was so funny. And like, so I was hanging out like with the in laws, like, and with like family friends and kids like there was like I was like a whole other like world and all of a sudden like I checked my phone and I saw that he replied that and I was just like I was like oh my god I couldn't even share it because no one understood the significance <laughs> of it and then I just started laughing and Thomas is like what and I'm like what? I was like sailor and he's like oh. he's like oh go but I'm like no no uh, that was just I just thought what a good sense of humor he has it just made me laugh so much but in seriousness so you guys should get married at the conference that would be so cool and I was like if he would officiate that would just be the funniest thing ever it would be yes. so funny we'll, we'll see what happens 
Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet. Um, it'd be fun to elope on, on the beach in Miami, but I don't know. We'll see yeah. what happens. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, I'll keep my fingers, fingers yeah. crossed for you. <laughs> Hopefully he's not going to be too brokenhearted. Well, I think that's oh, probably I'm a good sure note. He'll be to... fine. <laughs> he'll be fine. He, he can cry with his bitcoins, with his open dime, ah! or his um, Coinbase like uh, Steve phrase like plates. I don't know. He'll be fine. <laughs> um, okay, well, I think that's probably a good place a note to end on. Then, so I just wanted to say to you, thank you so much. Keep memeing. And uh, um, I'm really enjoying oh, all of you. your racy memes, which I very rarely retweet because I'm too scared to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to get like flagged from the Twitter algo. Like, just you can maybe do it um, on Noster if you feel it's a little bit right. more appropriate. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, it's um, okay. I'm not offended that uh, people have me on mute or don't don't retweet my memes or or even like them because you know you don't want to be associated with me. That's that's okay. <laughs> Now, I mean, quite often I'm scrolling and I see one and then I go, oh, she didn't. Yeah, yeah she did. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to ask you before, before, we, um, before we stop recording, um, where can people find you? So can you give them your current and alternate Twitter handles? Yes. So um, you can find me on Twitter at Ghost of Becca. Or um, my alt, it's BT Weekly Gossip. So find me on there or find me on Noster. My um, NPUB is N-U-P-8-E-K-K. -K. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was like, she actually memorized it. <laughs> Did you, oh, did you I, not, uh, did you not uh, do the directory though? Like, have you done yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. I you have. Um, uh, I think Becca at sats dot team, but don't at Noster plebs. No, not no, no, not on Noster plebs on sats dot team. Ah, uh, okay, it's so Becca at sats dot team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, is that a different directory registry? Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah, uh, okay. I didn't know that. Um, and Instagram. What's your Instagram handle? At uh, Bitcoin Becca, the classic. Yeah, I'm still waiting for Elon to unban my Bitcoin Becca original account, but I don't think it's happening. Oh, so you had a Bitcoin Becca on Twitter that is now. Yeah, I had a, I had a Bitcoin Becca account, and then I got suspended uh, permanently because of a Trudeau post. And then I had a Bitcoin Becca underscore account, and that one I got back up. So I was at 6,000 followers, and then I got that second one to 5,000 followers, and then I got suspended permanently for a um, for a meme. And then, um, so now this is my third account. That oh, my I've God. Created. Yeah. Hence and the ghost of Becca. Yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> do you know what do you know what you need to do is you need to set up an account that you meme on and then you just need a separate account where you just retweet those memes? So um, that... yeah, I had that. So um the my after my first suspension, I made all these alt accounts because like that's what you like Bitcoin Twitter's pretty much like four people with like a bunch of alt accounts. <laughs> And uh, so I had all these alt accounts set up. And then when my account got suspended, all my accounts got suspended because, like, I did not do a good job of setting up my accounts. And somehow my IP, like, address must have been flagged. Uh, so all these accounts got suspended for evading permanent suspension. <laughs> so I'm hoping that Noster fixes <laughs> yeah, Nostra yeah. will fix that. Well, it's interesting yeah. actually because Jack Dorsey made a comment as well where people were saying, "Oh, do you do you think that this is going to wipe out Twitter?" And I thought it was super interesting that he was kind of supporting Nostra and all the rest of it, and I guess trying to atone for for the mistakes he made in building Twitter. But his response was, "I don't see Twitter as a competitor. I think they could be a customer." And I was like, "Actually, that makes a lot of sense because mm -hmm. if you have your primary account on Nostra." I mean, it, I, I like the, co <laughs> we could talk about Nostra all night, but if you have your primary account on Nostra, essentially, um, you know, you you as a user are just going to use whichever service allows your, the, you know, your posts to be shown. 
So it kind of puts all of the UIs, like Twitter, like Instagram, like all of those different services in competition with each other to have as many people as possible beyond there. And they can obviously filter who they want to share and who they don't. But if your followers want to follow you, they're going to go to the platform that's happy to host you. So it will create a, uh, I think, a much better scenario in terms of the power dynamic between the content producer and the platform. You know, so I think I think Nostra is the way. <laughs> yeah, no, there's um, lots of lots of people building on Noster. It's very exciting to see. So it is. It is indeed. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Becca. I will put all no of problem. your many handles and pseudonyms into the show notes <laughs> and uh, I will hopefully see you soon. Excellent. Thank you. Keep memeing. <laughs>